Did you even hear about this? How do you feel about it? Let me read you a quick description. Meta has rolled out a group of bots played by familiar celebrity faces, including Paris Hilton, Tom Brady, and Snoop Dogg. Each bot has its own niche, specializing in specific topics for conversation. Okay, so Meta created AI celebrity chatbots. This was one of their big products of the year, one of their big launches. They spent a huge amount of money on it. Uh, here, let me read you a quote. One unnamed celebrity got as much as $5 million for a mere six hours of work to be turned into one of the AIs. So what happened next? What happened next was that it was a catastrophic failure. Like I said, a lot of people haven't even heard about this. So, so this worked in all the wrong ways for Meta. It generated a huge media firestorm, but nobody really seemed to be interested in it. Why? Let me read you a, some reactions. Celebrities, including Kendall Jenner, Tom Brady, and YouTuber Mr. Beast, who I do not relish calling a celebrity, are flocking to Meta to join its frankly dystopian AI chatbot program. Okay, so that's one theme. It was very dystopian, people are saying. In a recent interview, Meta CEO Mark Zuckerberg said there's a huge need for AI versions of celebrities who talk to normal people. I would like a prompt fact check on that, please. So really snarky and kind of dismissive and contemptuous coverage in the media, right? Not great headlines for a company to, to generate. And meanwhile, nobody in the real world seemed to be very interested. It was a huge, huge failure. So again, why? So one reason is that the chatbots just weren't very good. You know, the execution was poor. So here, here's a quick review. Uh, this one's from Bloomberg. The bots incorporate Facebook's in-house AI technology as well as Microsoft's Bing search engine, but use more youthful words, or at least words that might sound youthful to a 40-something Facebook product manager. The results sound something like what a satirist might dream up, but I regret to inform you that it is in fact real. Okay, so it's just uncool. The execution is bad. Um, and, and so when I say catastrophic failure, you know, I'm not kidding. So nobody really heard about it, despite Meta pouring all this money into it. The media headlines were very kind of, you know, bleak and dystopian and negative. And so as a product, it didn't see much take up at all, to the point that you know, it's a month later, nobody much is using it, it's dead in the water. Failure, uh, you know, failure to launch, failure after launch. In the tech world, that's that's a major failure, to spend this much money on something and see such poor, poor results. So what does this tell us? Why did this fail? Let's, let's zoom out and then we'll zoom back in, okay? So as one of the guys that, that transformed marketing, and I don't talk about this much with you guys, and we'll get into it in other videos, but I can tell you that on the inside right now, the marketing industry is salivating over this idea, this bigger idea, celebrity AI chatbots, celebrity AI in general. And the idea is that if they can get people talking to celebrity AIs, then they can slip in basically glorified product placement. So there you are talking to some whatever, model, influencer, or athlete, and all of a sudden they say, hey, would you like a pair of these shoes or something? Whatever, it doesn't matter, right? So they're salivating over this. They see this as the future of advertising because of course it doesn't, it's, it's much cheaper for them to do. And what they're hoping is that it kind of slips under the radar, that as you're chatting with these AI celebrity chatbots or what have you, you know, the marketing is so kind of pervasive and integrated into the thing that you don't even notice it as advertising or marketing. So that's, that's kind of like the capitalist picture of all this, right? And I think that probably it's a pretty, <laughs> it's, it's already failing, right? It doesn't seem that people really want this because it is very bleak and dystopian in a way, to imagine that this is the best we can do, even in the world of marketing or branding or, and advertising. Now let's zoom out even further than that. What do we know about the world today, and especially young people? Well, we know that there's a, there's a big crisis in society of social bonds themselves having been torn apart, right? So there's, 
we call a loneliness epidemic or you know friendship having become a luxury if you look at the stats about people having just friends they've declined dramatically over time so in that context this is kind of a predatory use of ai right and we should distinguish between predatory and constructive uses of ai so a predatory use of ai hey in the middle of a loneliness epidemic and in an age where young people are totally stressed out and, and traumatized and terrified you know the statistic that i recite a lot is that you know 60 percent of young people think humanity is doomed i mean this is i didn't i didn't make that up that's a real statistic this is dire stuff right so in that context it's a really predatory kind of use of ai to say that okay well you know society is is kind of ripping itself apart in these fundamental ways but hey, let them eat AI celebrity chatbots. So, predatory and constructive uses of AI. And I think in that sense, it's kind of maybe a good thing. Maybe a good thing to see this fail. Because I don't think that it's good for anybody. I don't think it's good for people. I don't think it's good for marketing or advertising. I don't think it's good for corporations. I don't think it's good for brands. I don't think it's good for relationships. I can go down the line. I think it's, you know, kind of what all the media coverage highlighted, highlighted it as being. Dystopian, bleak, dark, cynical. So maybe we should be hardened by the fact that this failed because people didn't use it. People didn't want it. They said, hey man, give us something, you know, that's not this. This is creepy. This is weird. It's uncool. It doesn't make us feel right. So in that sense, maybe we should be hardened by this failure. And there's a bigger question there, right? Which is that people are saying, hey man, this is creepy. This is weird. I don't know about this. And you can kind of see why. We need to do better than this. Uh, if, if, if we're gonna, you know, use these technologies positively and constructively, especially in an age like this, an age of crisis, right? The question for us in this age of crisis is not, how do we use these technologies in predatory ways to kind of exploit the problems and give people very shallow and superficial and in the end destructive answers, right? Because come on, a relationship with an AI is, is not real, right? It's not... AI doesn't care about you. So there, there's that use. And there's a constructive use, which is to say, how do we actually solve this problem? And, and if the problem, as in this case, is the loneliness epidemic and young people feeling terrified and stressed out, you know, you can see that that problem gets solved, if it is going to get solved, in a much different way than just saying, hey, man, here's a weird AI chatbot that looks like a celebrity. So I think there's a lot, a lot to be learned from this particular example, which is, you know, super creepy and dystopian. And I think that right now, tech, not just tech, but also marketing and branding and advertising, a lot of capitalism is really focused on super dystopian uses for AI. And they're going to push them. And I think that, you know, it, it's not going to work for them. You know why? Because the world is already in a very dystopian place, right? What are you giving people more dystopia? Nobody wants more dystopia. So those are my thoughts. I hope you enjoyed that. We'll talk more about it soon. Thank you.